Hello guys, good afternoon. Today is Wednesday, December 9th. Hopefully you guys are having a pretty good week so far. Um, so just a couple announcements. Um, connect groups this week. If you guys are not connected to any uh, connect groups, there are, are some uh, ladies here on the call who, um, who do have connect groups. Um, Myra has her connect groups Tuesdays in person and on Zoom. Um, and, and then today uh, we have Stella. Kyle and Stella have theirs in person as well as um, uh, Jen Navarrete and Maricela. They all have their connect groups today. If you are not connected, please reach out to one of them and they'll be happy to connect you with someone or you can head to the CFTN page. Um, the men's, the men's have a call, uh, call every Tuesday morning, every Tuesday and Saturday morning at 7 a.m. So ladies, if you have your husbands who are wanting to jump on the call, um, they're Tuesdays and Saturdays. Yes, Tuesdays, yes, Tuesdays and Saturdays at seven. Um, their calls, um, I highly suggest their calls have been amazing, I hear. Um, as well as the kids, Kids Champion have a Zoom call as well every Friday at six, six. Every Friday at six, I had a, um, every Friday at six. So please, if you have um, any of your kids want to get connected, uh, feel free to have them jump on at, on Fridays. Um, and that is it for, uh, that is it for connect, for, that is it for announcements. <laughs> so today I would like to, uh, um, introduce our amazing speaker today. She's gonna be teaching on the tortured soul. I am super excited uh, hearing about the soul detox and I cannot wait to hear what she has to say. It is going to be amazing. She is, um, she is a beautiful person inside and out and I just love to hear her teach every single time. And so today is Maria. Go ahead and take it away. Thank you. Sorry, you didn't let me unmute. Um, so yes, I'm very excited. Uh, this is such a good series, right? It's detoxing, detoxing the soul. A lot of times we uh, focus on detoxing our bodies and keeping our bodies healthy. But just as we started off the series with Sonia, you know, we are a soul with a body. We are not our bodies, okay? So we are a soul with a body. So our main focus should be the soul. Um, oh, let me throw it out there too. Sorry, uh, announcements. Um, you know, we, we, if you don't have a connect group uh, tonight, uh, please come and see our kiddos uh, during uh, Stella's connect group. They are going to be doing before song so if you don't if you don't have your connect group tonight you're welcome to join us we do have food and you will uh, you will hear the story of uh jesus being born through song so you guys are welcome too <laughs> uh so uh let me start with prayer lord i thank you and i praise you for this divine time lord i thank you for every woman that you have brought on this call lord i thank you for every woman that is trying to get on the call that you are breaking every wall and every hindrance in the name of jesus lord i i rebuke the spirit of division of offense and condemnation from this call heavenly father i thank you that you give us a heart to receive and ears to hear lord and I thank you and I praise you in Jesus' name as you continue to move through my through the words that I speak, Lord, and everything that is taught today. I thank you and I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So we are starting with that. We are a soul with a body. We are not our bodies. We have to keep that in mind. Our bodies are just a temporary uh, vehicle for our souls to be in uh, while we live on earth, right? but really our main focus is our soul. And as Christians, we have an internal battle that goes 
within uh, our bodies, it, from our souls and um, with our souls and our body, right? Romans 7, 15 says, I do not understand what I do for what I do, I not do, but I, but what I hate, I do. So, <laughs> so we pretty much end up doing everything that we don't want to do because we hate it, but what we ought to do, we don't do, right? Like there's this constant pulling of what our body is wanting us to do and what our soul is telling us to do, it's the right thing, right? And this internal battle goes on and then there's a torturing of the soul that starts to happen when we start sinning and it's a secret sin we start feeling guilty and we start covering it up because of this secret sin, right? Uh, in 1 Peter 2.11, it says, Dear friends, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain from sinful desires, which wage war against our soul. So not only are we already internally battling, right? But once we sin, it becomes a war. Our, 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 our bodies start warring against our soul, right? <clears throat> so there are two things that torture the soul. The first one is sinful things that we've already done, right? In Psalms 38, 3 and 4, because your wrath there is no health in my body, there is no soundness in my bones because of my sin. My guilt has overwhelmed me like a burden too heavy to bear. So we become tortured by the guilt and shame of our sin, like lust, right? Um, I can tell you that, you know, even as women, we can lust. We can lust over men. We can lust over things other people have, right? And it becomes shame. Like you don't want to say anything, right? It's like, mm, um, maybe overeating. You, you, you overeat, you know, when you sit down and you start overeating and then you go and you throw it up, but then you don't say anything and you carry that, right? You go out to eat with your friends and you try to eat, you know, really well, you know, you, but there's this torturing within that happens because you're trying to cover up that sin, maybe overspending, right? You, you go shopping with your friends and you're feeling, you know, you're showing with, uh, without, you know, outside, nobody really knows that you're being tortured within when you are paying for that purse or when you are paying for those clothes. Um, or maybe there's even that addiction, an addiction to drugs, an addiction to pornography. Um, you're putting on this phase when you're out with your friends, but then, you know that you're dealing with that addiction and there's this torturing that happens um, because you're trying to cover it up and you're trying to not let anybody know what you're dealing with. Um, then the second thing that tortures the soul are the lies that we believe. John 8, 44 to 45. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of, of lies. Yet, because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. So we become prisoners of a, pri uh, of a prison that is not true. Um, the, the speaker, I, I was trying to find a, a story of a time that I became prisoner um, well, I guess I did become a prisoner. I, I, I think I shared a few weeks ago of the time I was going to go pick up the kids um, and there was a spider. <laughs> there was a spider in the car. Um, but then there was this lie that I was afraid of this spider, right? Um, and I would not get in the car. <laughs> I was kind of prisoner in my own uh, parking garage. I couldn't go anywhere because of this lie, you know, and that's what the enemy comes to do. He comes to tell you, oh, you can't tell anybody about this. They're, they're not gonna like you. They're gonna, they're gonna shun you. 
right? What are they going to think of you for, for watching pornography? What are they going to think of you because you're lusting over a man? Um, so we become prisoners of what we've done and, and we're tortured, right? But it's a prison that isn't really a prison. The, the, the speaker that, that we were watching, he uh, gave this example where he, <laughs> they, they used to play this game and he actually ended up putting one of his pastors into a closet and locking him in. Right? He, they told him they were going to lock him in for the whole day. They couldn't figure out how to actually lock the door. And they just told him, oh, you're just going to be in there all day. Well, he, the pastor that was in there ended up spending the whole day in the closet because he believed the lie that he was told that the door couldn't be opened. He was just told the door was closed and the door was locked. Well, he ended up climbing through the ceiling trying to get out. We get to such measures when we're trapped in there that it becomes ridiculous. All he had to do was open the door, but he was trapped in there because he believed the lie. The enemy will try to connect what you did with who you are. You did bad, so you are bad. You failed, so you are a failure. You messed up once, so just keep doing it, right? How many times have we started watching a series that we shouldn't be watching? It's like, oh, well, I've already watched two or three episodes. Might as well finish the whole series, right? And we become prisoners, right? He, he keeps us in there still doing what we shouldn't be doing. <laughs> How do we set ourselves free? How do we do that? So now that we can recognize what the two things that torture our soul we can set ourselves free. The first one is to tell your soul to confess. It is better to confess your sins. Proverbs 28, 13. Whoever conceals their sins does not prosper, but the one who confesses and renounces them finds mercy. If you hold it in, it poisons you. But if you let it out, you find mercy and grace. As long as you don't confess it, you cannot find mercy and grace. You need to confess it. If you don't confess it, it just continues to poison you. It just continues to torture you. Confession is the moment you open that closet door not believing the lie that you are locked in there because you're not. Okay. How to confess. Okay. You, there's two things you have to do in order to confess. You have to confess to God. First John 1 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, and he will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. That is a truth we can hold on to. The truth is that we are waging a war. There is a battle within, and we will sin. But it is the moment that we confess our sin that he is faithful and just, and he will forgive us. So the moment we confess to God, we find forgiveness, okay? Then the second part we have to do is confess to people. James 5.16, therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. So we confess to God for forgiveness and we confess to people for healing. We invite someone into the battle. It is a prayer of the righteous person that is powerful and effective. It is when you go to your pastor, it is when you go to your spiritual mom, like to your spiritual papa, and they, they help you. They help you find healing. They help you break free from that sin. 
but they can't help you if they don't know. They can't help you if you don't confess. The moment you confess to God and the moment you confess to people, you find spiritual breakthrough. You cannot break free from sin without confessing to God and without confessing to people. You will not find spiritual breakthrough. Spiritual breakthrough comes from confessing to God and to people that help you through the battle. And spiritual maturity is shown when there is a short time span between the time of sinning and the time of confessing. Okay, that is spiritual maturity. Spiritual maturity is not, you know, not be, being perfect. No, it is having a short time span between the moment sin happens and the moment of confession. And if you can break it even down to the moment you start thinking thoughts, right, to, to confessing without there being an action, you know you're spiritually mature. Because the truth is that the enemy comes to tempt. The temptation is always there. He's always going to bring in those little thoughts. But if you can confess it, there is spiritual breakthrough. So, second way to set yourself free. Tell your soul, Christ will set you free. Remind yourself, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so you can endure it. Our God always provides a way out. There is nothing that you are in that there's no way out. God provides a way out. You don't have to be tortured. Your soul does not have to be tortured. There is a way out. So trust God with the consequences when you do what is right. 1 Peter 2.24 He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. By his wounds, we have been healed. You can find healing from the things that are torturing you. You just have to confess it to God and to people and remind yourself that Christ has set you free and free you are. All right, so that was a short and sweet I urge you all to look within. What is torturing you today? What can you confess to God and what can you confess to people so that you can find your spiritual breakthrough today? All right. Lord, I thank you and I praise you for this wonderful word that you have given us, Lord. I thank you that you have set us free, Lord, and free indeed we are, Heavenly Father. Lord, I ask that you just look within us, Heavenly Father, and you reveal to us, Lord, what is torturing us so that we can find freedom. And Lord, I thank you for the courage to confess it to you and to people, Heavenly Father. I thank you and I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.